When it comes to Grand Seiko, the watches are mechanically split into two distinct camps, high beat and spring drive. In this video, we're going to look at the differences regarding how they work and put them head to head. Let's start with the simpler of the two, the high beat. A standard mechanical movement is powered by a mainspring, which then transfers power to a balance, the actual timekeeping part of the watch. The balance spring is key to that, and curls and uncurls typically anywhere from 21,600 to 28,800 beats per hour. It's the combination of that beating and the escapement that divides the energy of the mainspring into fractions of seconds. The smaller those fractions, i.e. the faster it beats, the more accurate the watch. Grand Seiko's high beat oscillates at 36,000 beats per hour, making it extraordinarily accurate. Pair this with re-engineered parts like the 5% lighter escape wheel to enhance reliability further, and you have one of the finest traditional movements on the market. It also happens to sound like a helicopter, ticking at a steady 10 times per second. The spring drive, on the other hand, works very differently. Originally released in 1999, the spring drive has become Grand Seiko's signature movement, and for good reason. Most of the watch is purely mechanical, powered by a mainspring, exactly the same way as a traditional timepiece. However, the difference is the escapement, which has been replaced by the tri-synchro regulator. A portion of the power coming from the mainspring is converted to electricity, which is then passed through a quartz oscillator. This vibrates at a far quicker and more regular frequency than any spring, making it far more accurate. The downside is that this creates a lot more impacts between the parts, so Grand Seiko invented the eponymous spring drive system, which breaks the movement without any need for impacts. This means less friction and therefore greater reliability. It also has the side effect of the spring drive running completely silently. The result is a hybrid supercar of a movement, combining the best of both worlds, the autonomy of a mechanical movement and the unbeatable accuracy of quartz. First, let's look at accuracy. The current high beat 9SA5 runs with an accuracy of plus 5 to minus 3 seconds per day, while the latest generation spring drive 9RA2, on the other hand, runs at plus 10 seconds per month, so roughly half a second per day. It's an entirely different ballpark. For power reserve, the high beat 9SA5 offers 80 hours, a cut above the usually impressive 72 hours most serious watchmakers aim for. The 9RA2, on the other hand, boasts 120 hours, or 5 days of power. Both are immaculately finished, in typical Grand Seiko razor-sharp style, but you can see far less of the spring drive, so many collectors prefer the look of the intricate high beat. Historically, Grand Seiko used the high beat for more classical watches, and the spring drive for more modern flavoured pieces, mainly due to the power reserve indicator that was always on the dial for the latter. That's shifted these days, and you can find aesthetically similar pieces equipped with both movements, with the spring drive signature power reserve being moved to the back of the watch in some cases. Because both movements are bleeding edge horology, they need to be sent back to Japan for servicing. However, spring drive being what it is, there are far fewer watchmakers capable of servicing or repairing it, meaning costs are likely to be higher. It's worth noting, however, that they're made in completely different manufacturers, so comparing the two this way is harder than it would be at, say, ETA. On average, using Grand Seiko's current lineup, spring drive watches will set you back £11,450, while high beat costs on average £7,170. That's a difference of roughly £4,280. This isn't including limited editions, where the average price gap grows to around £10,000. There are slightly more spring drive models currently available in Grand Seiko's lineup, 67 of them to 62 high beats, but that still gives plenty of options either way, and it's a number that's constantly shifting as the watchmaker's prolific annual release slate comes out. What a lot of discussions around the two movements come down to, however, is the mechanical versus hybrid adjacent nature of each, and how much of a horological purist you are. Although the bottom line is that you can't go wrong with either, so really pick the watch that appeals to you most, rather than fixating too much on the movement. Ironic, given we've spent the last few minutes doing just that. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments which team you're on, high beat or spring drive.